Purple Warriors podcast. I'm your host, Ali Sugars, and thank you for joining us. This podcast is about raising awareness for domestic and family abuse by allowing survivors to share their own journeys to recovery. You will find practical yet powerful information and tools that you can immediately implement into your own journey to recovery. You will also hear information on how you can help someone you suspect may be in a toxic relationship. To support this podcast and get access to amazing bonus content, click Become a Patron for more information. If you have a story to share, reach out to me, Ali F. Sugars, on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Hosts and guests will often discuss sensitive topics in detail. While this is done with the utmost respect and dignity, this may cause triggers for some listeners. Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Purple Warriors podcast. Now today I want to talk about this little thing up in our noggin that I like to refer to as our itty bitty shitty committee. You know the part of our brain that allows all those ugly negative thoughts to come to the surface. The one that if we let it can get louder and louder until we are literally frozen with self-doubt, procrastination, even fear of what might be happening in our lives at the time. Now, I wish I could say that I coined this phrase myself, itty bitty shitty committee. Here on in, I will actually refer to it as our committee. But I actually heard it in a networking group that I'm still a part of a couple of years ago and I have since learned a lot about this phrase and also about my own committee and how to shut it up when it just gets too damn loud. So if you've been listening to this podcast for a while now, you know that I am a person that really likes to keep it real and keep it raw and talk about what's happening for me personally. And I do this in order to be able to share with you not only what I'm learning about myself, but also how we can all combat the crappy thoughts when they're going to inevitably happen to us. And let's face it, we all know the whole world right now is experiencing a lot of crap, aren't we? And while as much as I hate to focus on the negatives, during the past few weeks, this is actually what I have found myself doing, focusing on those negatives. Just like so many people around the world. So just like so many people around the world and in our country, Australia, where I'm based, my partner, Craig, had some news a couple of weeks ago that his job hours were being cut in half. Now, thankfully, he still has a job to go to. But you will have to agree with me that 50% downturn in income is still quite a significant drop. As well as this, my own business has also inevitably slowed down as well. Now this is my baby. This business is my passion. It's my career. And it's something in which, you know, I have been working extremely hard to create amazing experience for both my clients and myself. Now, also being someone who has, you know, had to start over financially several times already throughout my life, and I will say through no fault of my own, I began to focus on all the what ifs and how are we going to survive of the COVID situation. Then there was also the, do I really have to go through all this again? Just when we were starting to see some real progress in our lives on the financial front, And you'll never guess what started to happen. My anxiety reared its ugly head with a vengeance. Yep, my committee started to have an absolute field day. I started to get the physical symptoms of the anxiety as well that I'm now unfortunately (laughs) so adept in. I felt really nauseous on a constant basis. I actually developed a migraine which lasted for a few days and it actually, if I'm honest, probably lasted on and off for about a week and a half. I couldn't eat and when I did manage to eat, I was certainly comfort eating and emotionally eating because I was always reaching for the wrong types of foods. 
I became lethargic and I wasn't able to bring myself to do what deep down I knew that I needed to do in order to keep the momentum going in my business and even in the household itself. My mood swings, oh my God, poor Craig, my mood swings became so unpredictable. This man did not know, I didn't know what he was going to get from hour to hour. I just didn't know what was going to come out of my mouth. And I I have to say, though, that um, his even temper, even in such difficult times, it just does my head in. I don't know how he doesn't react to things like I do. But, you know, I suppose there is a huge difference between the two of us. And they do say that opposites attract. And we are definitely opposite in that respect. But as well as this sleep eluded me, I was not sleeping well at all. And my mind was constantly racing at a million miles per hour. The sad thing was that even though I knew and I could see what was happening to me, I allowed it to continue and for far longer than I should have as well. So I had to force myself to the point where I could pull myself out of the funk where I could prop myself up again. No one was going to do this except me. And I had to come to that acceptance. So today, I want to talk about some things that you can do if you're experiencing something similar and your own committee is giving you a lot of grief. So if your thoughts, doubts and negativity are getting too loud and causing you anxiety and stress and procrastination even, let's talk about how to combat our itty bitty shitty committees. So the first thing is to allow yourself to feel all the feels. Give yourself permission to react in how your body is telling you that you need to react. So if you're feeling like you need to cry, Allow yourself to cry. Let the tears out. If you are feeling angry, let the anger out in a healthy way, of course, but let it come to the surface because this is what your body and your mind is clearly needing. It's actually really not healthy to suppress these emotions. They're there for a reason and therefore we do need to make sure that we express them. So the night that Craig came home and told me that his hours had been cut in half in his calm, no worries manner, I literally said to him, I said, okay, if I get angry or teary tonight, just bear with me. This is the shock and I need to allow myself to process it. So I said, if I'm short with you, if I'm moody, you'll know why. And it probably seems silly that, you know, I even had to express myself in that way. But the fact that I allowed it to even come out of my mouth, um, the fact that I even allowed the words out, it actually did help me to start expressing those emotions already. And the reason I said this to him is because one thing that I have learned about myself over the years is that I do have a natural tendency to suppress my negative emotions. And it's something that I've developed, I think, when experiencing the abuse that I have. I've developed it because I've wanted to try to protect myself, to protect my children, as well as to actually probably, let's be honest, hide myself away from the reality a bit. And even to protect my ex-husband. But it was also because I didn't want everyone else to know how bad everything was and this in this current situation in these current circumstances became really evident that even though when I first found out the news I knew that I needed to express the emotions allowing myself only one night to do that clearly wasn't going to be enough. So do you know that that night, that first night, I only actually really shed a few tears and and really didn't react much more. I think part of me was actually in shock, as I mentioned before. I was already going into that 
automatic suppression mode, you know, that I've learnt to do over the years. But a few days later, Craig made a really simple remark to me that just totally <laughs> set me off. I began to cry. Quietly though, still not fully allowing the emotions to rise to the surface. And the thing is, I just wasn't really letting it all out the way I should have been. And this is when I actually found that those physical symptoms of anxiety and the physical symptoms of stress began to happen in my body. And the fact that I wasn't allowing myself to fully express my emotions, the negative emotions, was bringing on that depression and anxiety again. So when I did finally start getting myself together, though, it wasn't just a case of getting up and getting on with it. I had to work out why I was feeling the way I was feeling. Now, you might say, you know, Ali, of course you're feeling upset and worried, angry even. Of course you are. Yes, absolutely, of course I am. But what I really had to do was go deeper into my feelings, put them into more than one word. What exactly was happening around me to make me feel the way I was feeling? And again, you're probably saying, well, Ali, it's obvious. And maybe it is obvious to you as you listen to this story, but as we all know, when we're actually in the thick of it ourselves, it's not always as clear to see it as it actually is. Now, the wonderful Mel Robbins, who I follow a lot of her content, uses something called a word wheel to go deeper into the basic emotions that we name. So the emotions such as anger, sadness, fear, and then there's the happy emotions of joy and happiness and all the other happy emotions. But going a little bit deeper into the negative emotions that I was experiencing, so for instance, I was feeling sadness. Going a little bit deeper into that, I was feeling despair, that we are all supposedly in a situation that we can't do anything about. Then the next layer, I think for me, was actually guilt when I really thought about it. Guilt that I wasn't able to help bring in the finances into the household that we need right now, that I wasn't able to help in that respect either. Now to give another example maybe, I was definitely feeling fear. Fear of what's going to happen in the future, or fear of what's even happening now. But going a level deeper into that, I was definitely feeling insecure for all the reasons I just mentioned. You know, not knowing what was going to happen in the future. Will we? Won't we be eligible for government subsidies, etc., etc.? And the next level to that again, I would say, was definitely panic. And, you know, as I mentioned before, all the, the what ifs, what if this happens, what if this happens, what if this doesn't happen, all those types of things. And I will actually share a link to this word wheel in the description if you would like to download it for free. It's a really extremely handy tool to help you just get deeper into these emotions that you're feeling and learn a lot about yourself and even the current situation that you're in as well. So now that we've gone deeper into the why we're feeling the way we are, is there anything that we can do to change our circumstances? And for me personally, that was a big fat yes. Because deep down, I knew exactly what I had to do to bring myself out of the funk and shut my committee up. But in the moment, it's really not as easy as just making it happen, is it? I actually found that when I stopped, when I stepped back and I analysed the circumstances, yes, there was actually quite a lot that I could do to at least attempt to make a change. And if it didn't work, well, guess what? At least I would know that I've tried. When I began to see things more clearly, I actually noticed my moods gradually, very gradually, beginning to change. And therefore, because my moods were changing, so were my physical symptoms in my body. They began to dissipate as well. 
But what I also had to do was I had to stop and recognize the things that I couldn't change as well. Now, obviously, we can't help the fact that, you know, of course, jobs have been affected, that we're in a lockdown situation at the moment, etc., etc. I don't need to tell you because we're all in it together. So as well as working on the things that could be changed, I really had to come to accept the things that are basically just the way they are. Now, going a little bit deeper into that as well, a couple of things that I did to make sure that I could put these things into place, these things that I knew were going to help the situation, was I had to get clarity in my own mind of what I needed to do and how I was going to do it. So I wrote these things down on a piece of paper and I actually created an actionable plan that I am now following. And I've kept the old, the old smart analogy, you know, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely um, in this plan as well. And it seems to be working quite well because it's making me feel a whole lot better about the situation in itself. I mean, when I think about it, our circumstances haven't changed a lot. Craig is still working part time. I'm still hustling big time in my business. But what has changed in me is my attitude and my mental state. Now, don't get me wrong. Occasionally, the anxiety does come back. I mean, it's only natural for that to happen occasionally, right? But now that I've gone through these processes that I've spoken about today, I know that I'm in a much better place to be able to handle what's happening. Can you relate to this? Because... As I said before, and as the saying goes, we are all in this together. Which actually brings me to my last point. And although I feel like I'm repeating myself from past episodes, this is actually something that I will never, ever apologize for. Please remember, it is okay to ask for help when you need it. Because you do not need to go through this alone. Reach out to a friend, a family member, or someone that you trust. Now, for me, this would be my daughter. She would be the first person I go to because she's not only my daughter, she's my best friend. For someone half my age, I'm going to say she's a pretty wisdomous person, if that's even a word. And here, I would like to put an offer out to you to offer my personal support as well. If you would like to speak with someone who truly, truly gets it and has obviously worked through it all herself, I'm offering a one hour free reconnection session to help you get through this time as well. So you know how it goes. I'll give you the link in the description to book in a time with me. And I would actually love nothing more than to be able to support you through this time as well. So just before I go, I would also like to mention that here in Australia, the month of May is Domestic Violence Prevention Month. And to support this month, I'll be donating all monies that come in via my patron membership to an initiative called Healing Through Love. Now, Healing Through Love is an initiative that aims to shift awareness on family and domestic violence through providing pamper days for survivors in Australia. And I want to thank everybody who joins the Patreon membership and supports this initiative as well. So again, as the saying goes, stay safe, stay happy, and we will see you in the next episode.